Hello and welcome to Creature Texturing for Games in Substance Painter and Unity. I'm Justin Marshall and over the next few hours we'll go through the process of painting textures for our bird creature that we've modeled over the last couple of courses. We'll do this using the concept sculpt and geometry created in the previous courses. We'll start by importing our modeled geometry into Substance Painter and prepare our project. We'll learn to quickly bake all of the maps that Substance Painter will use to help create our textures. We'll then go step by step as we start creating textures for our model to control the color, roughness, emission, and other material attributes. We'll create wood, gold, skin, claws, and any other look that we need. Once we have our creature look completed, we'll export our textures and set up materials to work within a real-time context in Unity. Let's begin by looking at our model and then setting up the project in Substance Painter. So here is the start file. This is basically the end of the previous course where we created the game geometry using some retopology techniques here in Maya. And so this is gonna be 01 begin if you wanna start with this. You can also start with the end result that you created from that particular course. In this file, we have the high res geometry, which is the decimated meshes. And then we also have the game res geometry that we created. And so we wanna export two different things. And I've already done this, but you wanna export out your high geometry as OBJ files. And I've done it as separate models so that we can mix and match which ones we use for the baking. And then we also need an FBX of our game geometry. So I'll go ahead and select our model. Let's choose file, export selection, and we'll just export it into the scenes folder of the project that'll be in your project files. And it's gonna be an FBX. And so we'll call this bird creature export. And we'll go ahead and export that, okay? So once we have that geometry exported, we can do that as one file because everything is separated already by material. You can see we have the body as one material and we did that all in the last uh, course, but just go ahead and double check. You can see that everything that is a different color is going to have its own texture. You can also export the OBJs. I've already done that. And so if you look in the data folder of the Maya project, you'll find all of those individual OBJs. And those are the high res sculpts decimated so that we can bring those in and use them to bake maps. So now let's jump over into Substance Painter and start setting up our project. So here we are in Painter. We've got a blank scene. So let's go ahead and say File, New. And I'm gonna leave this template on PBR Metallic Roughness. And let's go to Select, next to File. And within our project files, we're gonna go into the Maya project, go into the Scenes folder where we exported that FBX, and we're gonna select that. I'm going to change my document resolution to 2K. We don't need to use UV tiles and we have everything already UV mapped. And so let's say, okay. So we've got our geometry in here. If anything looks amiss, you can go back into Maya and fix that. Everything looks okay so far. You can see all of the materials listed over here on the right. These correspond to those different colors that we saw. So the head, the body, so forth, are all separated out here. You can see the UV layouts on the 2D side over on this side. And if you click on each one of these, you'll see the different, uh, the different UV spaces. So what we need to do first is bake all of the mesh maps. And so Substance Painter uses some really cool uh, masking techniques and material techniques. And a lot of those utilize maps that are baked here in Substance Painter, maps that will indicate the curvature of the mesh or the underlying mesh, normal maps, things like that. And so we wanna bake those maps first. So we're going to come over here into the texture set settings. You can see down here, these are the maps that are going to be associated with this particular material, color, height, roughness, metallic, and normal. We don't have any maps yet. And so we're going to bake mesh maps. So we'll click on this button. All right. So the maps that we're going to be baking are located over here on the left side. You can see them with a check mark. If there are any maps that you don't want to include, you can uncheck those. Let's go ahead and change the output size and I'm gonna make these 2K. And now if we jump over to selection, you'll see right now all of the models are selected, okay? And so what we can do is do these all at once or we can do them one at a time. I wanna do them one at a time because I kinda of wanna separate out which high-res meshes are going into the contribution for which low-res mesh. And so for instance, let's start with the body. So I'll go ahead and uncheck everything else, come back to common, and here, is where we want to drop in the high-res meshes. So we're thinking about just the body. So we're going to drop in the high-res meshes that contribute to the detail for the body. So click this, and we're going to come into, instead of scenes, the data folder. 
And so here is the list of all the OBJ files that we've exported. Okay. And so thinking about the body, we've got the body high. We've got the claws high because the claws are actually part of the body geometry. The cowl is separate. The head is separate. The wood pieces are separate. The jumpsuit is not separate. So we've included it as well. And then also the main sash. So we've got these four different objects that are going to be contributing to this one mesh. So let's go ahead and say open. So now all of those are listed here. And those are all going to be the source meshes for the target, which is our body geometry. Okay. And so let's go ahead and say bake selected textures. And let's watch as those textures get created. Now we can see that sort of normal detail on there. So we can see the bumpiness of the skin, the smoothness of the jumpsuit, where the, the trim is on the jumpsuit, the separation between this uh, jumpsuit and the skin down below. All of that's one piece of geometry, but having uh, those different pieces in there enable us to separate that stuff out in one map. Okay. We can look at the map here. If we go to body, we can see the different maps. You can also come in here and look at the different uh, mesh maps. If we scroll down, here's the normal map. And you can kind of recognize these are the legs. You know, if, if you remember going through the UVs, you'll also notice those. And so we didn't use the pieces that were over the top just because we didn't want any uh, occlusion contribution from them, things like that. We've got the sash here, again, part of the same geometry. So we can come back up here and we'll just look at the material. Okay, so now we need to just do the same things with the other pieces. And so any of these pieces that are separate, now the padding, we don't need uh, to have anything like that. The wood we'll need to do. Now the wood contains a lot of different pieces. And so let's go back into our settings here, fake mesh maps. And here we want to choose the wood. And then we're gonna remove these objects and we're gonna add some different ones. So we're gonna add this back piece, the belt wood high piece. We're gonna add the cowl, the hip wood. Okay, so those four basically. So we'll go ahead and add those in and now we'll bake selected textures. And now we're concentrating here on these wood pieces. Okay. So now we get the detail from the carving on the wood and the detail on these wood pieces. Let's do the medallion. So we'll go to make mesh maps selection. Let's choose the gold, which includes the medallion. And then we'll come back in here, remove these and let's add our medallion piece right here. Okay. That's really the only piece as far as the gold pieces goes that has a high resolution mesh that we'll use. Some of the other materials will actually create from scratch. So go ahead and open that and let's bake selected textures. So you see it missed a little bit there and you can see some of the detail doesn't quite look right. And so on this one, I'm going to come back in and I'm going to change these distances just a little bit. So let's say 0 0.05 on here and then we'll rebake. So if you ever have any issues, you can always just rebake the, the textures. There we go. And that medallion looks a lot better. Okay. So let's go ahead and do the head. So we'll go to selection, do the head. We'll go back to common. Let's go ahead and add our head. Let's go ahead and say bake selected. Okay. So you can see that detail now around the head. Okay. The horns actually are separate from the head. So we'll go in and do those as well. Choose the horns. And this time we will remove the head, leave the claws and we'll bake. All right. So now we have that detail on the big tooth there and the horns on the head. All right. So that is, the preparation for our model by creating our mesh map. So we can see now the normal maps that we have. There are a lot of maps that we can use as far as curvature and ambient occlusion that we'll use in some of the smart materials and smart masking that we'll use later. So next, let's go ahead and set up the eye. The eye consists of uh, a few different layers and I always like to get that done kind of early on. And so let's go ahead and work on that in the next lesson.